Please listen carefully. Hello, universe. Welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Summer Sakai. And I'm Christy Jansen. And we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to one focus on solutions. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing the solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy podcast. Today is Tuesday, the 10th of August, 2021. Good morning, Christy. How are you? Good morning. I'm I'm well. I'm feeling good. And you no, know, we forgot to talk about yesterday. I think I do. What did we forget to talk about yesterday? We forgot to talk about our challenge, our weekend challenge. Yes, our Optimist Daily Update challenge. Body positivity and taking care of ourselves, our mental health, and our just overall well-being and wellness. Yes. All right. So what did you do, Christy, to cherish and care for your body, self, and mental well-being? How did you well, take on the challenge? The way I took on it, well, first of all, I did go to a swimming pool. And so I, that was really fun. It was felt so good to swim. Uh, my friends I have a pool. And so I spent Saturday afternoon with them. And that was really great to be outside and in the water and did we write about how like swimming or maybe I read it somewhere else. Swimming is actually a great way to reconnect your body and your mind. Um, I don't think we've recently had an article about it, but I know I have had firsthand experience with that. Totally so, agree. So, so that was that. And then I mm-hmm. also made it a point to not listen to any of my news podcasts because I'm like a total news junkie. And I usually start my mornings listening to like NPR and then I listen to the Daily and New York Times and then I read the New York Times and then I I'm just like in the news. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm walking the dog, I'm in the news. So instead of doing that, I just listen to music. And it was great. (laughs) (laughs) What music were you listening to? Oh, I have a Pandora playlist and it's usually like Andrew Bird is like my my touchstone artist. Mm hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, alt rock right kind of thing. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. It sounds like <laughs> it was very good for you. So I on I think it was Friday or maybe it was Saturday morning. I spent a lot of time likewise at a pool and outside and creating a lot of spaciousness, but I did the whole body gratitude thing. So I did this like mm-hmm. naked standing in front of my mirror, naked affirmations. Um to my body and thanking it for all it has accomplished and been through and and really just giving myself, you know, just like looking in the mirror and being like, great job, body. You brought a beautiful little girl onto this earth into really tricky circumstances and you've climbed mountains and you've done amazing things and you're still just trucking along. And so I just, I, it was all body positivity for me, um, doing sort of naked affirmations. Likewise, you know, I've largely tuned out mass media and news. I read The Optimist Daily and I read our our sources and all of our source materials that come in from the editorial desk. But I also decided to turn off the noise from other people. Mm, (laughs) So that's good. Yeah. And So many times when you talk to other people, they want to bring, even if you are trying to be a beacon of positivity and optimism and solution focus, you can really get sucked in by other people who want to talk about their drama or their opinion or where they sit in fear or frustration or explosion. So what I did, one, was not be receptive to those conversations if Mm -hmm. if people were sort of starting them. Because we did, we we had a birthday party for my daughter. And it was outside and this is generally everybody she goes to school with. So it wasn't introducing new people into, you know, a germ pod <laughs> where all of us toddler parents were all already all in the germ pod together. But I, I just, it just didn't engage. So if somebody was sort of saying, oh my God, did you hear blah, 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 I just stepped out or stepped away from the conversation. And then those people who were insistent, you know, family members or, or people that I, interact with on a more regular basis who are insistent on talking about outrage or indignation, I just flat out said I didn't want to hear it anymore, that that was not the space I wanted to be in. I needed to be in a healthier, more practical. Yeah, I think that's so important because 
it always takes two to have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So if you stop giving the space for those kinds of conversations, it'll quiet it down. Similar, like, you know, by me turning off the news, I didn't get, I wasn't a receptive audience for that. Exactly. Kind of like exactly. Exactly. You, were, you were not willing to receive yes. that conversation. I did, on the other hand, read the optimist view. Yes. Did it make you laugh? laugh? <laughs> what was the optimist view this past weekend it for was, those of you who are not emissaries? It, it was an ode to laughter. And we just talked about the... Um, the benefits, the physiological, the psychological, and the social benefits to developing your your laughter muscles uh-huh. yes. and enjoying that. And it went into some of the research behind that and also gave you some tips on where to focus your attention and your energy and how it could give you an overall boost. So the Optimist View is delivered every Sunday to our emissaries. Those are our paying readers, those folks who are able to contribute to the Optimist daily on a monthly or yearly basis. Yeah, oh. they're the ones who who help us be here to Exactly. Uh, they're uh, the one they're by they're our funders. They're our funders, exactly. <laughs> The interesting thing, so the what I what I loved about your comment about it takes two to have a conversation and and then you mentioned something in our pre-meeting that I'm gonna lead to your headline today, was that we get into this tacit acceptance, we get into sort of tacit perpetuance of the status quo, whether it be engaging in conversations or watching negative media, or as the case may be when it comes to environment and infrastructure around work. So, Christy, what is your headline today and why did you find it interesting? All right. So the headline that I chose to focus on, it reads, a simple parking policy incentivizes employees to take greener routes to work. And I found this article fascinating because it talks about how even though our a key goal of public transportation is to reduce the number of cars on the road, and therefore improve air quality, reduce emissions, uh, especially when you think about urban areas. There's actually a like a freebie in the federal tax code that works against this goal because there's an exemption for employer paid parking, which actually ends up subsidizing personal vehicle transportation. Even in the most urbanly dense jurisdictions, a company can write off the money it reimburses its employees for paying for parking, or if it provides free parking, if it has a free parking lot that it pays some amount for, it can write that off because it's giving parking to its employees. But what it doesn't incentivize in that way is people who take public transportation or ride their bike, or if they happen to live close enough, walk, right? Uh, So by repealing this tax exemption or working around it, it's like a solution that could end up with less crowded roads, especially at commute times, you know, rush hour, and also cleaner skies. As we all experienced last year, one of the few silver linings in our pandemic lockdowns was the, the better air quality in our, mm-hmm. especially in our urban areas. Yeah. And so this ends up inadvertently, I mean, it's not, I don't think it was intended, but it is a subsidized reward for private vehicle drivers. Right. And it right. doesn't reward people who opt out of that mode of transportation. They're probably not going to repeal this federal exemption because it is very popular with employers. On the other hand, one way to update this is to create an amendment that will require companies that have 20 or more employees who do subsidize parking at work. They have to offer an equal corresponding benefit to anyone who chooses not to drive. So it could be a credit to help pay for public transportation passes or a financial compensation for everybody who bikes or walks to work, right? So if you have a $40 a month parking lot, you have to then give the equivalent to your non-drivers in an option. So you give them a $40 credit for the public transportation, or you give them a $40 credit towards their bike repairs, or just even just having a bike, right? And I just think this is brilliant. And Or even $40 for remote workers who choose not to commute. There's that too. Uh You know, there's an awful lot of people that are no (laughs) longer going to be commuting to work and won't be returning to. And there's actually studies that back up how this can drop the number of cars on the road in a Mm -hmm. and and also whether it's increasing carpooling or 
transit ridership, but California, for example, are some some of our favorite state and some of our favorite state to hate, depending on where you happen <laughs> depending to Depending on where you sit in the country, yes. Where you sit in the country. <laughs> but um, they have a similar policy, and they found that when it got put into place, when all employees of eight companies that were offered a benefit equal to free parking, private vehicle commuting dropped by 17%, mm-hmm. carpooling increased 64%, and transit ridership increased 50%. So those companies then reported that the change was easy and affordable to implement and it, it ended up helping them recruit uh, employees and retain them because a lot of our younger workforce are very passionate about things like public transportation and you know having a, a smaller carbon footprint. So well, and if you think about yeah. it, it just by shifting the focus of it and shifting Shifting the benefit to a conversation of here are all the options available to you on how you can get to and from your place of employment, that allows people to have a discussion that they might not, that they just wouldn't have otherwise thought about, Yeah. right? So the idea yeah. that, wait a minute, so I could get a credit for taking a van pool and then I'm not going to be using my own car and I'm not, all of a sudden it becomes an option. Whereas the lack of awareness or information about it beforehand might have just never presented it as right. an option. Yeah. So anyway, I just think this is a great solution and it helps to drop all of our collective carbon footprints. And it helps to open up our eyes to the way that the status quo incentivizes behavior that is not really in the public interest yeah, in the long run. Exactly. Exactly. It made me laugh because I remember being like a young intern and working at a studio and having to pay for my own parking on the studio lot, which wasn't even an option. There was just no choice. And I could remember being early on in my career thinking this feels wrong as much as the entertainment industry did. But (laughs) it is it's definitely good to see things changing. I am excited for that continued conversation and uh, and we'll we'll offer you know non-commute credits for the optimist daily <laughs> someday <laughs> or commute credits in your electric vehicle as Christie's case may be as well so speaking of rethinking things you know in our constant search for ways of creating more efficient and greener energy the optimist daily editors are out hunting and today they have a very smart, very science-heavy story that I am going to attempt to take on to explain to our listeners. This headline reads, novel material converts waste heat to electricity with record efficiency. Quick background, thermoelectric systems generate electricity by using a temperature gradient, which basically is when one side of a special material is heated It causes the electrons to start moving from the warmer side to the cooler side, generating an electric current. That's the basics on thermoelectric systems. Now, researchers at Northwestern University have found a high-performing thermoelectric material that may be the most efficient at converting waste heat into electricity. The goal of this, basically, is that at some point, Researchers and scientists would like to be able to create and recycle energy that would otherwise be wasted as heat in electronics, power plants, engines. If you think about your phone getting really, really hot, what if that heat, basically, what if the movement of the electrons from one side to the other as it was creating heat could actually turn itself into electricity and have a more renewable resource? The measure of this efficiency of waste heat conversion is expressed by a figure of merit, which is described as a ZT. So this particular material, tin selenide, is uh, reported by the new atlas, now has a breakthrough level of 3.1 ZTs. So a few tests and tweaks, the team found the material to possess all the necessary properties to become viable material from converting waste heat to electricity. There's a bunch more information in the article, great quotes from the uh, researchers and the scientists. But what this made me think about, Christy, is as we rethink design, I think it was Friday or Thursday or maybe it was even yesterday, we were talking about porous concrete. And yeah. the way I think that it was last week, re- sometime. Yeah. yeah, last week, yeah. sometime. We were, and the way that that porous concrete can 
store and redistribute water and filter it. And then I was thinking about all of the incredibly hot concrete that is surrounding <laughs> our universe, right? And all of those the melting, heat. the melting asphalt, <laughs> exactly like the melting asphalt. And so just to me, the combination of this information, right? Like recognizing that, you know, potentially as they evolve, thermoelectric systems might be able to leverage some of that natural solar powered heat that's coming down and heating our concrete and heating our pavement that could actually maybe power our homes, you know, redesign. So I just like the idea and the direction and the creativity that can go from thinking about these different solutions as they potentially come together as we rethink design. We talked not long ago about all of the tremendous value of ensuring that there are green spaces because it does reduce the overall heat of an environment. So a lot of urban spaces that lack green spaces have huge heat issues. And that is why rising temperatures and heat can adversely affect communities where there are not green spaces. Mm -hmm. And I also think when we think about that, that's also water runoff. That's also, you know, where there's a high record, you know, high recorded food deserts. So let's combine all these solutions together and figure out ways to maybe use the energy created by the excess heat to power it and reduce the overall heat everywhere. That yeah. is my, that's my like utopian vision for porous <laughs> concrete and tin selenide <laughs> together, coming together to make the world a cooler, more regenerative place. All right. What else do we have today on the Optimist well, Daily? Other stories, other headlines from today. Claire Celeste's vibrant art is a reminder of how precious nature is. There's a hotline that makes it easy for anyone to call to demand climate action. I'm going to call that for I sure. I love it. <laughs> yeah. A former steel mill will get a new life as a producer of wind turbines. Yeah. It's a good. Uh, uh, and hopefully those wind turbines will there. be yeah hopefully those wind turbines will be made of efficient and recycled materials yeah, so that and, they likewise could be circular <laughs> right very important and maybe it can even like be co coated with a heat transferring material and, like exactly even get like throw some tin selenite on there and put them on porous concrete and we basically like yeah maybe yeah <laughs> speaking of a circular economy there's a headline that reads beyond recycling plastic can be eaten oh <laughs> now uh our editorial team pointed out that previously we have written stories about edible plastic this is not a story about edible plastic but instead enzymes that will eat the plastic so don't you at us on social media about not wanting to eat more plastic we know there's also a headline that's minnesota law improves conditions for pregnant women in prison there is a river revitalization plan prioritizing underprivileged communities in Los Angeles. Make the most of your skin serum with these application techniques. Like, don't try to put it on while a toddler's sitting next to you and knocks the whole bottle on the floor. And last but not least, stay present and mindful with these four strategies. That and much, much more, as always, is available on The Optimist Daily. Check us out at OptimistDaily.com and consider becoming an emissary for $5 a month to support reader-funded independent journalism. If you promise to keep reading, we promise to keep covering the events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and offering you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.